Hello everybody. Welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. Varalakshmi. Formerly worked in teaching and research in political philosophy in the Department of Philosophy of Andhra University. My interests are human rights and development issues. Present paper deals with the philosophical foundations of human rights. Present module is titled as Liberal Theory of Rights. This module covers the following aspects. 1. Learning outcomes. 2nd. Introduction to where liberty is explained. 3rd is basic tenets of liberal theory of rights. 4th with recent thinking on liberal theory of rights. And 5th with the summary. Now coming to the learning outcomes. This module aims at imparting the liberal theory of rights. This module also helps the students to know the perspectives and prospects of liberal theories contribution for development of human rights. Now we shall deal with the introduction where liberty is explained. Human rights are not legal rights, right to life, liberty and many other rights required for human development are not evenly distributed to all human societies even today. But there is a vast contribution of early and modern thinkers for realization and translation of many rights as legal rights as we avail today. The term liberty is generally understood today as a state of being free, a right of privilege or an ability to act as one pleases. Now, we shall deal with the categories of liberty. These include right to life, freedom of speech, freedom for individual development and free to choose alternatives. Liberty in general is a sum of assertion of rights, right to property, right to religion, freedom to assemble and freedom of press are some significant rights which are contributed by major philosophical and political thinkers in the history. There are other rights that are not yet covered in some geographical regions. For example, take cultural rights of tribal people for in the process of development projects even of re resettlement tribal people do not feel connected for they have an attachment to the land, trees also some religious sentiments are attached to their previous habitats. These aspects cannot be compensated by any measure. Gender rights are another example in this regard of liberal theory. Child rights are also still another area where child right, child's right to development is suppressed in different geographical regions differently. For example, Child's right to development includes right to health and education. In most societies, these child rights are all ill provided. Child is more deprived of rights in less developed societies and nations. Right to privacy, right to free from domestic torture are some personal rights. There are many such rights which need a social and legal intervention. Liberty to express one's views, one's uh, will to do or not to do is an evolving concept and it is understood in different places differently. For example, a widow could not express to marry again in the early Hindu and Indian societies. Women were used to be forcefully killed by sending them to the pyre along with the dead husband. It is through several reforms, struggles and contributions and efforts made by social reformers, present woman is allowed to remarry on the event of husband's death again. Liberty is necessarily to be understood at psychological, social, economic and political levels. And liberty only can be translated then only as a legal right after long struggles. Even constitutions of many nations were de evolved from early tyrannical, monarchic, oligarchic rules to 
democratic institutions to realize liberty for the most number of people. Statue of Liberty is a figure of a robed woman representing Libertas, a Roman goddess of liberty. She holds a torch above her head and in her left arm carries a tabula anastha inscribed in Roman numerals with July 4, 1776, the date of the U.S. Declaration of Independence. A broken chain lies at her feet. The statue became an icon of freedom and of the United States, United States and was a welcoming sight to immigrants arriving from abroad. The U.S. Declaration of Independence announced that the 13 American colonies then at war with the Kingdom of Great Britain regarded themselves as 13 newly formed independent sovereign states and no longer under British rule. Instead, they formed a new nation, the United States of America. John Adams was a leader in pushing for independence, which was passed on July 2nd with no opposing vote cast. A committee of five had already drafted the formal declaration to be ready when Congress voted on independence. John Adams persuaded the committee to select Thomas Jefferson to compose the original draft of the document. Jefferson's preamble is regarded as an enduring statement of human rights and the phrase all men are created equal has been called one of the best known sentences in the English language. Thomas Jefferson on April 2nd, 1743 was an American founding father who was the principal author of the Declaration of Independence and later served as, a, as the third president of the United States from 1801 to 1809. However, we should not understand liberty in the negative sense or liberty in a society and in a given constitution is only a legal right to do an act that is pre-thought as, as conducive for the protection of others, rights in the same society and not an interference for legally permitted rights of others. It is negative liberty when liberty is used in a wrong sense, harming one's self and also others. As we very well known, man is socially responsible to family, society, he cannot exercise negative liberty or freedom in a wrong sense. Please see the image on a negative liberty where youth using their freedom in smoking, drinking and use of drugs that impact them badly. Hence the word liberty does not imply that man cannot do whatever we want to do without considering the ill effects of an action. Kemp Pelen puts it, man is not born free, he is everywhere in chains because at the very moment of his birth, man is chained by an umbilical cord. When this cord is severed, for the rest of his life, he is navel bound to the society into which he is born. And Kupuswami held that excessive freedom of speech lead to a conflict. Hence, freedom implies an order, a social order, an a legal order. Thus, rights are civil rights only when they are respected by all the members of society and protected by a judicial system. When we look into the history of rights, we find that these rights are not distributed equally to all the members of the society at each phase of history. Thus, the notion of liberty became a limited concept to a vast number of society and across nations. We also find only some wealthy nations and uh, people to have excessive rights to. How do we explain the notion of liberty that is healthier and equal? What are the contributions of uh, philosophers, political theorists and others to this liberal theory of rights?
as early as in ancient Greek societies from the words of Socrates to theories of a recent western thinker namely John Rawls. Liberal theory of right is revisited in each phase of political history. Thus, contributors to liberal theory of rights in the West are many Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, J. S. Mill and are some political philosopher, philosophers to contribute for liberal theory of rights. We can say each political thinker in the West or in the East from Kautilya or Chanukya to Gandhi all are contributing to this thought. Recent activists like Aung San Suu Kyi and many others are still contributing through their movements for better understanding of liberal notion of rights. Furthermore, one has to look at some dilemmas too while understanding the notion of liberty. In the current day contest, as for example, Liberty is questioned by some feminist notions in relating to the rights of the child. For example, upbringing of a child is mostly understood as a women's role alone, but women's right needs to be understood in terms of her will to participate as an intellectual contributor to the society. Child rights are in conflict with such notions. Thus, there are claims for equal participation and sharing of domestic duties by both the parents equally. But a well-defined state gives primacy to child where it provides well-maintained support systems for child care. Thus, the term liberty is a vast concept and it is to be measured and practiced each time through re-refining it as an as to the needs of the changing times. It is in this backdrop one may study the liberal theories, theorists contribution for the expansion of human rights. Now we shall deal with the basic elements of liberal theory of rights. Let us look into the history of rights and liberal theories contribution for the expansion of rights in general. Coming to the liberal theory of rights, it is mainly understood in the political perspective in the contribution of political philosophers and political thinkers, whose theories helped for the evolution of democratic states. This again is understood in four heads. They are perspectives on liberty in classical theories, post-classical liberal, liberal thinking and identification of individual rights and third modern thinking and quest for natural rights and modern thinking for evaluation of democratic rights. Perception on, on liberty in classical theories, post-classical liberal thinking and identification of individual rights and modern thinking and quest for natural rights, modern thinking for evaluation of democratic rights. Polis is a Greek term for state. It is in the hands of Socrates. Plato and Aristotle, state is redefined and rights were questioned. Though Socrates did not provide us with any written text on the theory of rights, it is in the works of Plato, views of Socrates are depicted. Socrates, who is considered to have lived from 470 to 399 BC, was deprived of his right to speech to tell about his ideas on justice and his views against injustice and despotism. In fact, Greek city-states like Athens were considered to be most advanced polities of their times. But Socrates accepts death sentence just to tell that man is obliged to follow the laws he alone constituted in a society or a state. At the same time, Socrates makes us to think whether an incomprehensible law makes the citizens suffer from injustice. Thus, Plato's Republic comes to us as a revolt against an unjust law. Thus, views of Socrates and Plato tell us that a law or legislation should not be a hastily conceived law, but it has to give a scope for future expansion. Aristotle's idea of state, 
and rights expounded in his classics namely politics and ethics nevertheless are founded on philosophical basis of the state conceived by Socrates and Plato. Aristotle's Ethica Nicomachia reads, we do not allow a man to rule but a rational principle. Nowhere Aristotle insisted to obey an unjust law. Furthermore, Aristotle forces certain aspects that cause revolutions in a state. Aristotle cautioned the rulers that the law should not provide for anyone such facility as having too much power whether derived from friends or money and also that the constitution must not allow disproportionate increase of any citizen. Aristotle insists to give moderate honor for longer time rather than great honor for longer time. Aristotle also cautions the rulers to see that the most number of citizens be placed in the middle class in the population and lesser number in the poor and in rich populace. Though Aristotle's constitution is a combination of aristocracy and democracy, Will Durant, a philosophical, philosophical theorist of our time says that it is Aristotle's state is the best possible state. Will Durant substantiates his argument because the people are so easily misled and so fickle in their views, the ballot should be limited to the intelligent. Durant adds, constitutional government offers this happy union. It is the best possible state. Thus, we find in ancient theories certain path-making efforts for the emergence of liberal theories in the modern period. Coming to the post-classical liberal thinking, where identification of individual Individual rights is there. We will see after the death of Aristotle and after the fall of Athens, the political thought of the West acquired a cross culture of Greece and Rome. The philosophy of state developed in this period is of Epicurean and Stoic in nature. In a way, Epicureans and Stoics took a part of Greek ethical thought on good life. However, this good life is inclusive of man's rights to pleasure and avoidance of all pain, worry and anxiety. While hitherto in the classical period, collective well-being is given primacy to individual rights. In the post-classical times, individual is identified to suffice to man is the measure of all things, but sophistic notions were criticized by Plato and Aristotle basing on that fact of that too much inclination for hedonistic pleasure harms the collective well-being. Yet the roots for natural law, natural law conception which is basis for all human rights in a, in a legitimate state or in the philosophy of Epicurus. Epicurus said all men are essentially selfish and seek only their own. But in this way, the good of everyone is jeopardized by the equally selfish action of all other men. Accordingly, men either enter into a tacit agreement with each other, neither to inflict nor to suffer harm. Similarly, Stoicism of Rome depicted in the works of Seneca too identifies good citizenship as we found in the words of Aristotle and it holds that immodest property is the most dangerous element that befogs the distinction between true and false. Further, it was Gaius and Ulpian Roman lawyers who established, who established the rational basis of state in the post-classical times. To Gaius and Ulpian, utility of state is the product of the sense of justice. According to Gaius and Ilpian, the law of nature is that which treats all men equally anywhere on the earth. Hence, the invention of a contractual state that guarantees individual rights is anticipated in the theories of post-classical thinkers before it is thought in the 
modern period in between post classical times and modern period there was a renaissance period too this is also called as a historical period to give rebirth to human spirit that was ignored in the 15th century machiavelli's contribution to liberal notion of justice is worth mention worth mentioning in the history of political thought he was the first to break the traditional tradition of religious domination that is witnessed in the medieval period when individual rights were ignored to the most extent in his prince machiavelli held prince and republics who wish to maintain themselves free from corruption must be above all preserve the purity of all religious observances and treat them with proper relevance further with due regard to aristotle's conception of state machiavelli said just as in the body natural as aristotle said the heart is the source of life having in itself the blood which it transmits to all the members thereof whereby they are quickened and live so in the body politic the will of the people is the source of life having it in the blood namely political forethought for the interests of the people which it transmits to the head and all the members of the body by which the body is maintained and quickened it is in this backdrop of struggle for natural rights emergence of contractual theories of modern thinkers and for enforcement of natural rights emerged in the modern period now we shall deal with the modern thinkers where quest for natural rights were has been occurred philosophically and political speaking modern period is also known as the age of enlightenment or the age of reason discoveries in the science in the modern period are many in the early 16th century copernicus uh, heliocentric theory made a significant impact in the scientific outlook of the world further galileo's law of falling bodies and newton's laws of gravitation robert boyle's law of heating bodies and harvey's discovery on circulation of blood and many other scientific inventions contributed for rationalistic theories on state and rights while modern science is based on the sense perception verifiable principle <coughs> and on quantifiable methods francis bacon a philosopher who is also considered as the father of uh, empiricism developed inductive logic all these contributed for the scientific and rational basis of uh, political theories to look at the image on path making political philosophers namely plato aristotle hegel marx hobbes locke and other political theories further industrial revolution contributed for lessening the manual labor at the same time it is also contributed for human exploitation economic exploitation and political hegemonies that raised revolutionary questions on rights of nations and peoples thus modern period includes contributions of many political theories from hobbes to marx in the modern period hobbes john locke and jean jacques rousseau provided theories on natural rights of man and social contract based state thomas hobbes leviathan states that man in the original state of nature appears to be brutish selfish and egoistic where man is reduced to physiological and psychological components man's desires to are endless and thus there arises a state of war among people hence to avoid this state of war where every man is every man's enemy man invents a state based on the three laws the three laws of the formation of artificial state or a contractual state that hobbes aimed at are first law to acquire peace against war second aims at security of individual 
positions and third is an arrangement of a political state based on a covenants. Thus, man enters a contract with the state to protect his selfish needs according to Hobbes. However, Hobbes acknowledged virtues namely benevolence, injusti benevolence, justice and peace for furtherance of a political state and security of rights. Locke invented a contract based state to protect the right of man to private property. To support his aim, Locke attaches theory of labor to his theory of right to private property. This leads to formation of a well organized state. Though Locke was criticized that he is a supporter of capital formation of wealthy class, Locke was not devoid of a political state that supports reason, toleration and moderation. Thus, he believes in the natural law, will of majority and commonwealth. Further, in the theory of Rousseau, social order is not a mere social order, but a sacred order that facilitates one's social life and such rights are sacred rights to Rousseau. While Hobbes and Locke fail to see the sensitive side of human being in the construction of a state to the most extent, Rousseau bases his theory of state on the benevolent nature of human being. Thus, Rousseau could assume the man in the state of nature not only as a self-loving but also a responding man to others suffering. This type of understanding led Rousseau to conceive the idea of general will. Rousseau's general will is a will of everybody through which every individual in a state respects others will in full dignity and in sense. Furthermore, Rousseau contends that primitive man did not know the art of pleasing as we do. Thus, Rousseau's state is more close to a democratic state and a humanistic state. Thus, many a thinker can be brought to the arena of modern thinking. Now, we shall deal with the modern thinking where evolution of democratic rights are well established. In the hands of liberal thinkers, namely Jan Stortmill, John Rawls, Durkin and Marx, liberalism took an unique turn. Some liberals may not consider Marx a liberal, but he is also a liberal because Marx's goal is freedom, emancipation and right to freedom, freedom from social exclusion. However, any theory that advocates excessive liberty is not conducive both to Mill or Marx. It is generally understood that liberal theories like Mill, Rawls and Dworkin given primacy to liberty. Marx gave primacy to you equality. However, principles of equality and liberty both are important for institution of democracy. Jan Stuart Mill is an English philosopher and also an economist. He is basically an utilitarian. Utilitarian, utilitarian philosophy aims at the utility of an action and it aims greatest happiness to the greatest number. Freedom or liberty is a basic principle to attain happiness. So, Mill's theory is based on liberty and happiness to the majority of people. He is highly acclaimed utilitarian and liberal thinker. J. S. Mill in his work called liberty postulates that despotic rule prevents liberty of people. Liberty can be sanctioned only in a state where state exercises its power in a limited way over individuals. He is against slavery and for natural rights of man. Mill defined social liberty as protection from authority. Social liberty provides constitutional checks to citizens. Mill is against to censorship and he advocated for freedom of speech. Mill also advocated child rights. He said to 
bring a child into existence with a very fair prospect of being able not only to provide food for its body, but instruc instruction and training for its mind is a moral crime both against the unfortunate offspring and against the society. Mill's theory on liberty necessarily is based on morality, for he said in his liberty, individuality is the same thing with development and it is only cultivation of individuality which produces or can produce well developed human beings. Further, John Rawls theory of justice deals with liberal theory of rights. In his in theory, individuals enter into an agreement in a state under a veil of ignorance. Thus, state is run with a difference principle. Rawls difference principle holds that there are inequalities in society, but these the least disadvantaged groups will not be affected. Rather, to Rawls, where the basic difference principle is associated by public recognition and principle of reciprocity. The principle of reciprocity takes care that no social group advances at the cost of another. Further, Durkin is another thinker of recent times. Durkin is in fact a follower of Rawls, who postulated an egalitarian liberal state. Hitherto, liberal theories claimed that their state is a welfare state, but Durkin and others contend that Rawls theory did not focus on equality as much it focused on the reciprocity. So, Durkin focused on equal opportunities for all. To Durkin, legal validity depends on moral validity. This moral validity for Durkin is not based on the sources of validity and in the consensus of lawyers, but in the value of a thing or a person and it is in not just law that it determines the validity of principle of life. To Durkin, this validity is based on the social rule and social life that exists outside the courtroom. And it is a positive feature of liberal democracies that they aim at such a state which helps individuals for their independent growth with the least interference of state or authority to their personal rights like right to private, like to privacy. However, all these liberal theories nevertheless aim at a welfare state supported by capitalistic democracies. For the principle of free trade or laissez sphere of liberal theories is conducive for capital formation indiscriminately. This is certainly against equality as Marxist dreamed. For to the Marxist state is a classless society and it is devoid of private property and everything in is state owned for Marx. Recent thinking of liberal theories of rights where secular power and democratic rights of liberal thinking have been acquired from evolution of kingly states to democratic states after long struggles like French revolution, colonial struggles of nations like India, Pakistan and other nations and impact of industrial revolutions. Yet, as we understand, even today rights are not evenly distributed. Karl Marx questioned social and economic exploitation of laborers and capital accumulation. Capital accumulation by employers of industries or factories due to non-payment of proper pay to workers. Thus, a surplus will be created. This surplus is the amount which is due to the industrial laborers. Marx influenced subsequently through his works, namely Das Capital and Communist Manifesto to evolve better laws for workers in factory and other service centers. While some consider him as communist and others as liberal and still others as sociologists, Marx acquires a special place and his theories on economic exploitation are ever relevant to the global societies. Today's idea of democracy is, is democracy is equal to liberal democracy 
plus socialist democracy is equal to freedom plus equality. Indian constitution is the best example for sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. This we can better represent in the following image. Look at the image, where in the human history nations witnessed political hegemonies of nations like US and Britain over other nations. Mahatma Gandhi, the father of India, Indian nation, led a non-violent revolution to free India. On the other hand, we see still struggles for democratic governments in the nations like Myanmar. Aung San Suu Kyi's pre-democratic movement of 8888 could evolve democratic nation after a long struggle. Recent utilitarian theories have not thought of equality as seriously as Marx did. Furthermore, in the name of liberty, rights should not be limited to any one class or one nation. Nations and people need yet to evolve rights. Only few people and nations are granted to right to liberty as a legacy from generations. Nations still suffer from discrimination and deprivation based on gender, race, age, caste and other geographical categories too. Security of women and girl child is still at stake across the globe. In view of high rate of crimes against women, children and poor and many disadvantaged groups and crimes related to use of drugs and alcohol and other crimes like cyber crimes and economic exploitation, certain rights like rights to property and right to privacy need to be rethought. The highest court of India, the Supreme Court of India is thinking of redefining the right to privacy and it is under discussion under the headship of Justice Jagadish Singh Kher, who is associated by other judges, namely Justice Chandra Deva Chandra Chud and others. It is time to evolve Gandhian legacies and Marxian economic practices and normative ideologies and more sophisticated understanding of rights. Let us summarize the points that we have underwent. These modules covers a vast area of liberal theory of rights from ancient Greek times to present times. While ancient theories focused on the collective well-being and rightly framed laws and strict discipline, later theories focused on certain individual rights like right to private property, freedom of expression, etc. And we also find from liberal theory of rights module that before the concession of liberty and understanding in proper sense by all, they also happen to exercise the concept of liberty only by few people and few nations. Hence, we need to re-examine the liberal theory of rights. We also understand that it is time to evolve Gandhian legacies and Marxian economic practices and some normative ideologies and more sophisticated understanding of rights. I hope you have enjoyed by being with this module. Thank you viewers.